um, today here in the, in the orchard, that's a perfect example of overgrown orchard. All the bedding wood is at the top. The problem with this is all your nuts is at the top. How do you control your pests? Um, how do you get your, 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 your sunlight in? You're losing this whole uh, part of your tree. There's no bedding wood. Um, you're getting your yields gets up and down. Your pest control is impossible in this orchard. If you manage your orchards when, they, when they're still young, you won't get uh, a loss in, in production like you're going to get when we prune this orchard. And normally your production from a young orchard starts to increase and then it flattens off as it matures. And uh, when the orchard gets as, as overgrown as this, it will flatten and it will start going down, down the hill. And uh, this orchard is, is on its way. And you've seen that previous orchard where it's dead wood at the bottom, it's already on the, on the downside. So we, ideally we would prune this orchard, open it up, get rejuvenating new wood, new bearing wood, um, to get the production to, to be stable and constant and, and high. To get efficient spray into your tree so that you can get penetrating into the middle of the tree where your pest is, normally your, your nut borer and your sting bug, we actually need to open up this row 1.8 to 2 meters so that we can get our tractor and our, our orchard equipment in. Pruning is quite essential and that's why we need to get the timing correct. Start pruning May, June, July. You don't actually want to go into flowering. So rather start early, prune and, and harvest those nuts on the trees and then you can mulch the branches later on. Most of the time labor is going to do the pruning. We have to simplify the whole process of pruning. If you look at this tree, you can see there's more than one dominant stem going up. Um, so we're going to select some of the, the competing stems to your main center leader. So first rule of all, you select your leader or the one you want to be your central big, big uh, branch going up. From then on, you're going you're gonna to cut some of the, the others that's, gonna, that's competing with it. If you have two that's competing, you, you cut one. If you've got three to four that's competing with, with, with your central leader, you cut two per season. And it doesn't really matter which one you cut at what stage, uh, because if you're not cutting in this season, next season you will you will cut you will make that cut. So we want to cut it quite low. If you make it too high, it's very difficult to control your regrowth and uh, in in the future. And the other thing is, if you cut it too high, the whole object of bringing in light is gone. All kind of tools can be used to to make this cut. You can use this. Nice silky saws are quite accessible into the tree. You can make a decent cut at the bottom, or you can use small chainsaws or whatever. And we want to cut first the shoulders if you can, on the sides. When I talk about the shoulder, I'm talking about the branches going out and it's actually shading in your, in your inter row. So by cutting that branch first and the one on the other side, then you can start working on your, on your other branches that's in the middle that's competing and that's too strong. By doing that cut, we're rejuvenating uh, the, the growth. First, I, I want to choose where I want to cut it. So I'm going to cut it into a side branch. You can see this is a decent side branch comparing to the thickness of, your, of, your, of the stem. I cut it at an angle, but I don't cut the collar away. Never cut this collar away. So always cut it a bit higher there at the angle. We don't want to leave a big stump with a lot of regrowth coming out. The nicer you make this cut, the lesser regrowth you have. So first, you cut it from this side because the, the branch is leaning this side. You just make a, a, a small cut this side, cut it from that side so it can fall over to, to this side. So by doing the, the competing branches first, we're actually topping your tree automatically for that season. Cutting them out, you're actually taking the eye down and that, that next season you can actually start taking off the top. I'm just going to explain to you where you can top this tree. So this will be our central leader in the future and we're going to select the height you want to cut it. You're going to select the side branch on it and you're going to cut the top off at that height. Try around about four and a half to five and a half meters will be fine for, for eight by four spacing. We want to skirt the tree so that we can get into harvest, we can control the weeds and we can check the irrigation underneath the tree. By, by getting a uh, basic principle, you select the height, you can say pocket height or just above your knee and you cut the, the branches on, on that. Uh, you don't always go back to the main stem, otherwise they cut a lot of your bearing wood away. And you can see, you're already at that height. Nice. 
scrolling and regrows is a critical part of your pruning process. You can see this has been cut last year when you pruned during the winter time. You come in December, January when it's still soft the regrowth. You break off the, the regrowth. By breaking it off, it, it actually doesn't grow again. If you cut it, it grows on that point again. When you break off regrowth, you look at what do you want to leave for the future for bearing wood. When we made this cut, made it with a plan so that we can get side branches here again in the future rejuvenating this whole canopy already there's some flower on this lateral branch so we want to look we want to leave the lateral branches and we want to take up your water shoots that's going up branches like this you're going to break off you're going to leave three to four lateral branches that's going to be your side branches in the future We just came from an overgrown orchard to this well-maintained orchard. You can see the farmer has pruned this tree in a nice pyramid shape. And we can actually get this Y shape in the middle of the row. And you can actually see you've got enough space for your farm equipment, tractors to get in. To get efficient spray into your orchards to control your pest. Nice sunlight from the top to the bottom. You've got flowers to the bottom, right up to the top with optimum yields. And with this orchard, we can actually maintain our pest control to get optimum quality and optimum yields for future.